Hey everyone, so uh, in this video I'm going to start doing the uh, ground mount uh, hydro, ground mount solar rack for our new solar system. Panels can come in by the end of this month so I need to get uh, prepared for it. Uh, yesterday I dug out the holes and now I'm going to make the little concrete forms. I'm not actually going to put the posts in the ground because I want this to last like 30-40 years minimum. So put in little concrete uh, footings and then um, have the posts set off the ground and it's going to be timber frame with metal brackets uh, like I showed in the design I've been cutting out some brackets I'll show you some clips of that on the plasma table we've got some brackets cut and yeah got a lot of milling to do um, and yeah just getting prepared and then we'll try and knock it together pretty quick there go come and tell right so um I got all the holes and everything laid out so they're like 150 kilos of concrete each so it's about two ton total something like that plus about two ton of wood in the building itself so um, yeah they're down to the nice hard clay so that should anchor the building quite well not the building the frame so yeah now i need to make some uh, boxes and forms for it so that's what i'm doing now So we'll have uh, this in concrete going down 500 mil into the ground. And it's going to have one of these on top drilled in. And that has a little plate over it like that, covering those holes. <coughs> and then um, the post sits in, in that slot and gets fixed with, with these three pins. And that will be our footing, so it will be off the ground, hovering above even the concrete. And it should last a long time then. So that's our design we're going with. I'd much rather have done these in with big bits of stone, like big rocks, and have the feet set on them. It would have actually been less work because these boxes and forms have taken a long time. Uh, but I haven't got any, so you have to do it in concrete, unfortunately. Stick that in there. String line down there. That will give us a square down here. Hey, princess. I didn't see you there. Hello. the square cats aren't that much help when you're working with string lines come on girl you see string <laughs> she is a joy though I wouldn't be without her she's so cute tie that around there Go and have a look, see what it looks like on the other end. Right, got my four corners in and they're squared to each other, triangle to triangle or corner to corner. So uh, now I fill in the middles to a string line.
Hey, well, that was easy. Okay. Okay, looking quite good so far. Okay, that was a bit stuck. It's not too bad really, could be better. I don't know if I'm a bit too early taking the forms off or if the uh, if I'm right in thinking that it's dried out a bit. I think it's dried out a bit. I think this water is gonna do it wonders. Let's see. I know where I've gone sort of a little bit wrong with this. So I should have used some sort of a release agent because what's happening is it's uh, stuck to the plywood and not coming away, do you know? Um, so, but I've got a plan. So a while ago, someone gave me this uh, tanking slurry stuff and I've read about, read it online about what it is and read the manual for it and you can apply it to uh, fresh, concrete and it's a waterproofer and it's also filling in my uh, voids which are gonna ultimately lead to failure in the concrete because they they get moisture in them and they freeze it expands and it pops a little bit off and then each time it does that it slowly erodes or develops a crack and then that crack ultimately leads to failure. We have to have a good tidy up round here tomorrow. Right, so that is the foundation done and ready to mount the post to. So yeah, it is quite overkill. For a solar ground mount you can just bury stuff in the ground but i'm at the age now where i don't want to ever redo stuff so this now will have solar panels on it or a building on it or something on it for uh, the rest of my life that's the plan that's why they're done in the way they are but yeah we're ready to uh, start building the frame hey everyone so the uh, foundations are hardening up nicely they're looking really good after giving that paint well the uh, what's it called uh, tanking uh, solution just cutting out some brackets because it is windy and sunny and we've got so much power coming in the wind turbines are going mad just trying to use up some power the batteries are at like well they were 100 percent they're 93 percent now uh, sun's out wind turbines going so i'm just cutting out some more brackets so these now are like the diagonal brackets so they add a bit of diagonal support bracing and some end brackets. Yeah, after I've cut this sheet, that should be most of what we need then. If you want one of these tables, that's where you go. It's really good. Oh, I don't know where I, what I'd do without it now I've got it. It's weird how that happens. Right. All on solar and wind power.
Right, so as you can see, I've got a few posts fitted. So I wanted to get a few done before I really started recording much, just because they're uh, getting set out. So because the ones down here are a lot uh, lower than the ones up there. Um, so they're obviously a lot longer. But I've done all of the edge ones, and then a string between them, and then fill in the middles. And that gives me the length. But as you can see, it's, uh, it's coming along quite well. a load of milling yesterday, and I've got probably about two thirds of the timber I need now, milled. And uh, so probably another day's worth of milling. Um, but I just can keep getting these posts up uh, in between the string line. So I put a string between here and here and then measure down. And then that gives me the post length, keeps everything level. And then we'll start uh, putting in the actual cross members. But yeah, I think you'd agree, it's looking quite cool. Right, Dot has been grinding back the brackets that cut on the plasma cutter, started painting them. She's painting in the corner there, and then I'm going to go and fit another two posts. Right, so just put this uh, 22.5 degree angle on it. This is the angle of the slope of the structure. Uh, the timber I've got is only just big enough to get five inch posts out of it. Um, so I get the odd bit of sapwood. So like then, that actually had bark on it, that corner. So I'm using the fact that I need to cut that off to get rid of as much of that as I can. I'm gonna put a bit of treatment on the sapwood so it lasts a bit longer, but ultimately these little sapwood bits will rot away tiny bit there and we'll lose these corners but it won't affect the structure because like yeah 98 percent of it's all nice heart, heart, heart wood that will last years and years and years so they're two cross members i'm gonna go and get them up and then we need to put a piece in between them bolt it all up together for the back wall part
There we go, that looks good, doesn't it? Uh, so like I say, I've had to... Uh, this foundation somehow ended up about 30 mil too far that way. Um, so I've had to overhang this to get this to line up right. But yeah, it's not too bad. I think I've saved it for the most part. So it's going to be not overhanging that way, but overhanging a bit this side. But yeah, that's all right. Also made another mistake as well, which I'll show you now. Alright, hey everyone, it's the next day. Today I'm gonna try and get these uh, high beams in, the long ones between there and there. There's only two because I wanted an open space in the middle for storing stuff. So we've got two beams going across on the outside, which should be plenty strong enough. You might have noticed I've cut this down, cut them off of there. Originally that beam was meant to go that way, but I did so another mistake. Got wrong on the uh, drawing, I didn't account for enough slope on this hill and that then clashes with the foundation down there and it doesn't look right because um, because the other one's so much higher because of the difference in elevation of the land and the different lengths of posts. So instead now, that one at the far end is going um, in line with the, uh, you know, the original idea and then this one is going to have another bracket in here raising this one up. So they'll be odd but they'll be more alike because they'll be more similar heights against the posts at the back. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna get the two um, timbers machined down and through the plane of thicknesser and then get them fitted. Hey everyone, so new day. I've just finished all the milling I need to do for this project, so all the timbers there. So I'm just going to put in two braces uh, today because it's like one o'clock now. Do two braces, but I'm going to try and get this done for the end of the week so I can get this video out. But we'll see, there's a lot to do still. So because they're just kind of like rough sawn on the sawmill, I'm actually putting them through the plane of thickness as you've seen. Um, it just helps it go together better, less messing about. Uh, so yes, machine down two, cut some 45 degree angles into them, and then we'll put in the 45 degree brackets, give some bracing. Running out of fixing, so I'm just putting a few in for now. Looks good though, right? I have to say, I do like the look of this. It does look good, doesn't it? It's a bit of a shame, it's just a solar panel, right? It's a way of practicing a new technique, do you know? Yeah. It does look good though, doesn't it? I sort of almost prefer it, you know? a traditional timber frame with the pegs because I think the contrast between the bits of wood and the brackets does look good. Like I say, I, th I think it's quite a lot more expensive to do and uh, 
quite a bit more wasteful as well, I think, with materials and uh, what we're doing here. Yeah, up here. Okay, let's put it down. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right, so there we go, there's the uh, the odd braces, they haven't got their metal plates yet, but they will do soon. Now, kind of indifferent to the looks of them being odd. I don't think it looks good, but then I don't think it looks too bad either. So I'm alright with it, fine with it. Um, it's practicality, if I made that one, if I made that one match that one, then I've got, you know, limited space to get stuff to park in there. I didn't really want to do that. I was only going to have one bay in the middle that we could get anything tall in. So, uh, so yeah, I'm pleased I did it. Now I can park something big in there if I get any new machinery. So hey everyone, so had a bit of a nightmare actually with this last couple of days. So originally I noticed on, um, on a certain website that I've used before that uh, they were selling some second-hand panels for a really reasonable price, 260 watt panels, uh, X solar farm panels, and they're a really reasonable price. And I bought a pallet of 30 of them because they're cheap, they're five years old, they're second hand, it fits in with the ethos of the channel, you know, reusing stuff. And then I built all this massive because I had those cheap panels. They weren't the most efficient, they weren't new technology, and they're five years old, so, and they're cheap. So I bought lots of them and decided to make the uh, system bigger to account for the fact that they're a bit older and so on. Anyway, the company had my money for like two months, um, lots of money, for like two months and then the day before I was supposed to receive them they said oh by the way we can't get them um, and yeah so already built this, was expecting them to show up, now I've had to um, get some panels that are really expensive and the system's now way bigger than I need it to be. It's doubled in capacity because it's now like nearly 10,000 watts of output and it's cost me twice as much. So I'm really disappointed with that. Originally it was going to be a really cheap second-hand system and now it's not. Now it's a brand new, very expensive, top-of-the-range technology because I've had to buy brand new panels. Yeah, so anyway, a bit of a rant there. I don't know if anyone else has noticed as of recent, you just can't seem to get a decent service anymore for products and services, it's just impossible. Right, it's too hot for this. Oh, there we go, perfect. Oh, that's nice. What we like up there, perfect. All right, I'm well pleased with that.
So I'm just fine tuning the fit here. It's uh, always leave a little bit too much on them because I always find they because you because you got two halves, you know, you get get them one millimetre out, you're out by quite a bit by the time you double it, do you know? So I always leave a bit extra then fine tune them in. Right, so that is the front beam done. Came out nice with the uh, nice half lap joints. So uh, now onto the roof rafters. So last uh, roof slash support log going in a rafter, whatever you want to call them. Hopefully she'll fit. Right, last one. I'll be pleased to get this done actually because quite difficult to get these fit right and uh, yeah it's quite repetitive so be glad to move on and start doing something else right this one needs a little bit of a curve cut it's not quite sitting right 105 just move over that way a tiny bit 1065 108 that's not right a little bit. 107. 107, that's it about there. It's just not quite sitting down as far as I want it. It's not quite in the right spot. Crush my finger. <laughs> the drill spam round and clamped it between there and there. Perks of the job. Right, let's get this in here. Easy bit out of the way. Let's try and not fall off as I do this. Right, so that is the bulk of the work done on this uh, on this frame. And I think we're pretty much ready for uh, mounting panels. I've got a few plates left to do. Um, one next to me here, um, one on the other side. There's a few little odd jobs to do. Probably put in a couple more braces just here and there. Just uh, just stiffen it up. Still got a slight wobble up here from the top. Um, but that is the bulk of the woodwork done. So uh, we'll finish off those last jobs. And then in part two, we shall actually start doing all the wiring and mounting the panels and everything. So yeah get on and finish it right it's really uh 
really windy today and just getting me last uh, few brackets up I'm not gonna do too much film it's quite repetitive of stuff we've already done but yeah just get these in I only painted them last night so they're a bit wet but I'm uh, keen to get this done so I can get the video out to you lot So you have to excuse the uh, the wind, very windy today, but I've just put the final uh, bracketry on. Uh, actually not quite, I'm just putting those little L brackets at the front there, still need to do. And uh, then it's finished, I just need to take these uh, supports and things off and have a tidy up. Yeah, looks great. So, frame's done, which is going to be the first part of this video, it's going to be a two part video. Um, I'm waiting for the panels to show up. Like I said, I have to, I've ended up getting new panels, which means that the um, system now is actually about 10 kilowatts, just under 10 kilowatts. So it's a substantial system. And uh, we're also going to use under it for storing firewood and timber and stuff like that. So it's not going to be wasted ground. It's going to be um, wood storage as well. It came out really nice. Just get up on it to give you some scale. Yeah, it's quite a big structure, as you can see. Yeah, anyway, it's, uh, it's gonna about to chuck it down. Weather's gonna get bad. Next week, we'll start fitting the panels and wiring it all up. All right, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.